Ah, okay lang. Sorry, ah. Sinilip. Wait. Um, fast lang, guys. Okay. Okay, um, hello everyone. It's February 19, 2021. It's a Friday and that means that today, Friday, we just have another free Friday class. 5.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. If this is your first time watching the Austin 10X live market update, we do give a free Friday class. This is our way to give our time for everyone who's uh, supporting the channel. So don't forget to please like, subscribe, and share Austin 10X to your friends. Now, I'm just wearing a monster pajama, but actually I've taken a bath already. So what I found that it it was um good to actually uh just share um are the monsters out there haunting you uh from your sleep uh because we do make money while sleeping let me share to you later on the opportunities 10x that will make your portfolio really wonderful so do remember to just like subscribe and share to awesome 10x this is the youtube channel where you can increase your wealth you can increase your mindset and get educated of the best companies that you are available it's available to you worldwide now of course this is just a philippine market update so let's just begin with the philippines first all right so um all right Philippine markets is up 76 points after going down last night. Uh, 6,126 are up 1% today. Which companies are actually giving opportunities in the Philippine market? Are there companies that we are interested in? Okay, so market values right now, 9.16 billion pesos. In the Philippines, that's just $200 million. It's not a lot of money. You've got 98 advancers, 116 below decline, and uh, still 579 million pesos selling off, or just about $10, $12 million. So really, the Philippine market has very little liquidity overall, and the function of liquidity is really going to be a critical element to see companies in the Philippines go up over time. So let's take a look at the gainers and losers on your index market in the Philippines. All right. Index movers, you've got SM 1065, AC 797, AEV 43.6, BPI 86, JG Summit 65, BDO 108, Ayala Lang 39, ICT 120, Aboy Tisfar 26, Globe 2048, MPI 4.2, Jollibee 180, Bloomberry 768, Emperor 10, DMC 5.3, Sunical Corp 126, Lushatan Group 14, FGen 30, GDCAP 570, SECB 129, URC 135, Mega World 3.89, Robinson's Land, 1924, Pure Gold, 3780, PLDT, 1345, SM Prime, 3575, Robinson's Retail continues 57, Miralcos, 282, and Metro Bank is 50.1. So what you can actually foresee and foretell with this 30 companies in the Philippines is that the market went up simply because your SM and EC managed to rise a little bit. And what happened in the Philippine market is that the shares uh, have stopped really going so far on the downside. Meaning, yes, you've got um, Robinson's Retail continuing to slump, but it's not like going 51, 51 peso. Meaning at 57, 58, you do see some buyers. It's going to take maybe a month or so. Just like what you saw with your goal here at about 37, 38, it's not falling and crashing 10% down. However, after slumping from 48 pesos to 37, 38, there continues to be the buyers. Similarly as well, despite the market hitting 7,071 a couple of weeks ago, you do see the attention isn't really on the index, but what exactly is the attention into? Take a look at the stats today. Let's take a look at the top traded names. Your continuous increases in speculative names continue to be the barometer of your Philippine markets. Actually, it's not the index names that have been moving up. As you well know, the top traded names in a Philippine market continues to be the non-index names, the speculative names. THA is up 10% today with 500 million pesos. So after hitting that 320, it fell to about 250. It's now to 290. However, we still see that these companies are frothy at the maximum at these over uh, overextended tops. Your ASIN is now trading at 780. However, this is still at the extension mode. APL 275 still at the extension mode. You are now seeing choppiness over these areas. Your BSE goes up 9%, but still, it's still below your two bucks. It's still below 140. We're seeing this as a chop chop mode. Your D total come is 18 bucks, still in the choppy areas. Vulcan is down 16% after hitting 350. Take note, these companies went from 1 peso all the way to 4 peso and now back to 295. Doesn't prevent, doesn't exclude that it goes down to 2 pesos as well. Your green energy is now 4.2, but again, green energy went up 
uh, like since one, right? Take a look at the names that are happening in the Philippine market. What you're noticing is that since March, um, since the lows of the year, the most increased movers in the Philippine market are not the index names. You're seeing that the market in the Philippines are heavily situated in what you'd say are non-index names, narrative names, and companies that are at most giving you a, a backdoor play, a restructuring play, just like Fa, they were saying like they were doing the squid pay and the crypto platform, Asen doing the renewable energy space, APL going to mining, DSC trying to do the renewable energy space as well, Dito Telecom with the story of narrative of uh, fighting the 5G telcos on the current incumbents, the Sharp PLDT, what's happening with your green energy, another play on, uh, on potential, they were saying, what did green energy say? Something about medical marijuana, isn't it? Um, or, or what else? And then Mary Mark, also a disruptive story, like taking off the Goliaths, quote unquote, uh, the Goliath pure gold. So what you're seeing in the Philippine market is really a lot of narratives of trying to fight the incumbents and um, and a lot of disclosures. Basically, that's disclosure here, disclosure there. Um, but these disclosures are just promises, right? There's no execution. Not a lot. Like we saw some execution on some end. Like some people have, uh, of course, Asen got the Masek to fund them out. Uh, but of the rest, I'm not quite sure if they really have some execution except, hey, we want to restructure our company and do this and that. After a 10x, 20x move on some of them, you've got to ask yourself a question. Do they actually deserve that 10x move? from their lows or a 20x move from their lows now um, of course tbgi has this, that disclosure another story uh that they're saying that you know we've increased and in our franchise renewal etc um your f and i and your nickel are benefiting from of course your electric vehicle boom all the world then for prim 15 percent up here perhaps it's another restructuring play uh let me try to see prim um still at the resistance mode here people got in here maybe at about one peso below and then two pesos sure can go three pesos or four pesos but you could actually see that these are more of a how do i say this mm, that's the thing about the philippine market we just have people just um buying and selling and sometimes there's no news they just like the chart right um Okay, let's take a look. Prime Media Holdings knows if any press releases. The blog is since 2014. They don't have an active management program taking on their websites. Their shareholder services, nothing here as well. So um, this is the kind of companies that are existing in the Philippine market, sadly. Um, not a lot of transparency on their websites. Let's take a look at it. Mm. Prim news. Let's see if there's some news happening. Nothing as well here. Let's take a look at Edge. Perhaps there's nothing as well. So it's essentially just people um, buying, selling. Nothing here. Oh, January quarterly reports. Oh, let's see. Uh, they are a 50 million peso company. They've got liabilities. So they've got utangs. They've got a billion pesos of debt. So they don't, con they, they don't contribute to the world so far in the Philippine markets. Um, nothing. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the investigrams. Uh, maybe they know something. I don't know. Let's take a look at them. Okay, uh, what's up with Prim? Maybe they have news. Let's try to understand. Dollar prim. Any news on this name? Or just nothing? Prime Media, two bucks or 100 per set in two days. Uh, market cap is 1 billion with 1 billion pesos of debt. Uh, volume has increased. Yes, I could see that from a charting perspective. And then um, news and disclosures, nothing, right? Uh, change in corporate details and our website update. Okay, let's probably read this. December 29, 2020, they said that the termination between RIM and Green Energy and certain landowners. So RIM has mutually agreed with Green Energy to terminate the MOA 
And then providing this disclosure, COVID pandemic, I don't know what it means. Um, try to see more results. What exactly is the corporate website changes? Let's try to read this. Uh, change in building name. So they're transferring. What else? Why would a uh, change in a uh, change in a uh, website actually prompt a one hundred percent increase in the price, guys? You know something I don't. I don't really know. I mean that's why I'm asking, right? Um, social live feeds view. Prem malakas. Okay, these are all charts. Uh, charts na naman. Mirror mirror on the wall. It's all charts. So it's technicals. Um. Nothing. Read more posts. Nothing, eh? It's like people just penny stock players. I don't know. So the thing about this is that so the Philippine market is really a small market. It's easy to actually just pump. I'm not saying that it's pumped, but um, you know, it's just a market. People like to buy. People like to buy. That's it. Good chart. Uh, let's say five years, let's take a look. For all we know, there's something happening here. We just don't know. We just it's not in the it's not in the website, it's not in the social posts. I I don't know anything. You know more. You know more. Uh one year return. Okay, let's just take a look at the chart then. Okay, for the chartists out there, what you could clearly see here is that it is a company that went up from, from 80 cents to 2 pesos so far. You've got these clear resistances, 265 here, 220 resistance here, and the people who got in at 120 below are happy, right? So um, they're all making money. Usually, uh, the people who made money here are probably going to take some profits off the table. 100% move in just about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7 days. It's a, it's a good way to actually prompt, uh, prompt a profit-taking zone. Now, of course, it can go higher. 2.5 is not uh, uh, an impossibility. But uh, you have to be understanding that these are your potential resistances. So we're just going to trade this because we don't know anything. Uh, it's just a trade. So what else is the buying area? Um, people don't know what it is exactly, but uh, the people who got trapped from about 10 years ago actually have the choice to actually unload and actually transfer their money to something that they probably know about. So um, you sell at two bucks, two sixty, three bucks, get on and move on with your life. All right. Say, so, uh, let's take a look at your questions, if any. Uh, let's go to the commentary. Hi, Nikki. What are your thoughts on DWC? All right, let's take a look at DWC. DWC already rose 600% from its low. So there is a prompt for profit taking. However, you want to actually see whether these entry points are actually an opportunity to enter. So, all right, you've got seven pesos uh, as your first uh, peak, right? So people probably sold at six pesos as well. Uh, how low can this go? All right, let's go. Let's do a Fibonacci here. DWC is a company that's trying to reinvent itself. Uh, how are they reinventing itself? They're acquiring assets in Palawan, Boracay, Shargao. Basically, it's a real estate acquisition play. All right, so um, I don't think that there's enough people who bought below three. So we would assume that um, the, the core of the volume actually started somewhere within this area already. You'll notice naman eh, the volume picked up here, January 22. And so the people who don't have DWC might actually want to enter at 440 and 380. So these are more opportunities to enter than sell. Now, what would prompt people to buy it up? You could see that the volume here has started rising, starting from 350. Quick run up to seven prompted some people to sell. But uh, my argument is that, well, if you don't believe that it's worth seven bucks and you actually believe that it's going to go higher, you're going to actually want to buy these drops today and you're going to buy that for holding it on. Maybe it goes to seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So, um, you're more of the in the stage where people are actually understanding that, hey, DWC looks to be a great company and they might not have been uh, on the radar screens of many people. Awesome 10X has told them, well, I shared it to you guys a little bit late. But um, yeah, some people probably bought in three pesos, two pesos, right? So um, nothing bad. Uh, for those who have this, just try to accumulate. 
perhaps four bucks to three bucks. Let's take a look whether we can hit this a 5, 10, 11, 12 area within the next couple of uh, months or years. Okay, uh, let's take a look at all the other questions here. Is it because of the late vaccine? Nope. You're, the only reason why you're probably losing is because, I don't know your price. Um, I don't think it's a loss. Uh, I don't know what price you entered, but I think that the drop is actually more of an opportunity to enter. What's Mary Mart? Mary Mart looks to be right now consolidating. Like there's no action in these areas, just uh, distribution in my view. For those who don't know what the distribution means, a distribution is simple. The people who bought at three pesos are selling at seven to eight. So um, you're getting unloaded. Like uh, this is a sell area, meaning of course it can go up, but then again, your upside is very small. If you buy at six only to make money at seven, doesn't look like an attractive risk reward, especially if there is, a, of course, a potential for it to also go five. So uh, usually on these types of extension moves, you're more on the selling prowl rather than on the buying prowl. So these are most, more sell orders rather than buy orders. Okay, um, let's take a look at other people's questions. MHC, please. Is Davin making reversal already? All right, so um, let's answer those things. Uh, Davin looks interesting, but um, let's take a look whether there is volume trying to pick it up. So I mentioned that I know nothing about Davin, uh, but there's that disclosure, of course, that Davin is trying to change their corporate name, change their website, change all of their businesses. And right now, the Philippine market loves those changes. Uh, they don't even know what they're buying, but they like changes. So 6 pesos is now trading at 650. I understand that some people would buy this as low as 5 pesos if it ever craters down. You see the volume picking up. And so I think that it's worth a shot, but I really don't know what exactly Davin is going to do. Uh, they just said they're changing their name to the Keepers Holdings. Whatever they're keeping uh, to the market, we don't know anything. MHC, let's take a look at this, Mabuhay Holdings Corporation, you've got the volume increasing so far and you could see that Mabuhay Holdings has gone up from 30 cents to 85 cents in the past. So there's that ability for this one to go 3x in their lows. So the, the ones that got in at 30 cents, they like to unload at 85 cents, sometimes even as high as 90 cents. So entering at about 59 cents doesn't give you like a super duper high reward, but at 59, I think your risk is it goes down to 50 cents, but your reward is something in the realm of 80 to 85 cents. So um, risk reward wise, I think you've got that upside but this is your downside. So as long as you know what your downside and upside is, you're okay to buy your MHC. Hi, um, Nikki Yu, thoughts on your Nickel Asia? Just a continuation. Nickel Asia doesn't seem to have a lot of resistances, but it doesn't have a lot of support as well. As you could see, it's just in a console mode right now. So um, consolidation means that it could just stay in a range so far between four area and eight. Uh, and six pesos, right? Um, we don't know if this will break above to seven, eight, nine, because uh, at the end of the day, you know, it already rose from 150 to six bucks. Usually you want people to actually consolidate first and uh, a consolidation could take about a while, like three months or six months. You want to actually see, of course, it can continue to seven and eight, but as you could see, very strong resistances here at 750 and very strong resistance here at nine. So the fact that Nickel Asia is able to stay above 450 tells you that the bulls remain in control and any drops is actually being accumulated and still being bought. Actually not called accumulation. It's just being averaged up by people. So um, the people who got in at two, three, four, they just want to hold on to their winner. Maybe they'll sell at six only to buy it back at five. That's also possible. And with Nickel Asia, rising you can see that fni is also doing the same thing like fni has resistance here at four but at the end of the day can it go back to below two when you see it going below two you do see a lot of people willing to buy it up like uh look from about four three bucks all the way to two bucks there's been people buying it up so that's a 50 percent move just on the same thematic that maybe nickel has to come continue to climb with electric vehicles uh, as a catalyst for that five year to ten year boom Mm, CLI, IDC, how about DMC? Um, can Mac 3X soon? Let's go and travel. 
it's all about the same thing, guys. Um, DWC, Macroasia, Cebu Pacific, they're all a travel-related place. So you'll only buy them if you believe that within the next six years or five years or six months, whatever you want to say, that we will all be traveling and doing a lot of revenge travel. So of course, Cebu Pacific still has this resistance, very strong resistance at 70 bucks. And of course, very strong resistance, you're about 100 bucks. So um, the question isn't really about whether we will travel again. I think the transportation is a critical element not just in our country, but worldwide. So Cebu Pacific, Macro Asia, DWC, they're all the same thing to me. Um, they're all just a reopening play, but more, more often than not, you actually want to see the market actually agree with your calls. So, so far, what the market can uh, agree with is that so far, okay, three bucks extended to as high as nine, but so far, six on six area for your Macro Asia is still continuing to be quite a lot of resistances. However, some people are willing to buy as early as four bucks here 450 so i guess um you don't see it going down to three but even so even if it goes to 450 or three i guess there's a lot of people who are of the determination that traveling is a huge important uh, industry uh tourism is important not just for us but actually worldwide um there's a question the dmc right the problem with dmc is that you have to understand that dmc's downtrend is related to semirara all of your coal mining assets in the future are perhaps going to be having a shelf life about 10 to 15 years. So it's really about that. The ability to actually transition to a renewable energy mine uh, is important. And so DMCI has that big problem with the coal assets. How are they going to actually just transition themselves overnight? It doesn't transition overnight. Yes, for the last couple of years, they've already been discussing their renewable energy foray. But, you know, I think that it's very clear to me that when, when you've got a critical, um, these are perhaps going to be, taking 10 years time before it even reaches 10 bucks. So for five to double your money, if it's going to take me 10 years, perhaps it's not an attractive company in my view. Um, I don't know. I think like it's, there's just a lot of other opportunities perhaps. Um, you know, I could be wrong, but I just think that there's a lot of companies that can double your money in 10 years time and, or even less. All right. Um, CLI and IDC. Um, so these are property related assets. Property, in my view, as a sector, is not expected to recover fast. Um, yes, you've got companies like Cebu Land Masters giving you dividends. Okay, it's just a dividend play, but for, for like actual uh, real estate asset sales going up, um, even if they say that you know um, they are a stable company, balance sheet wise, it's there. Um, you want to actually assume that the property segment worldwide, actually in the Philippines, is not okay lang. I think CLI, the problem here is just a matter of, ano eh, um, people are buying it for dividends, right? CLI gave good dividends. They gave, this is one of the few companies giving strong cash dividends. 20 cents here, 25 cents here, people buying it up because of dividends, that's 5%, right? Any company that gives you cash dividends tells you that, hey, I am a company that makes some money. I can give you stock divs, I can give you cash divs, and that's what CLI does. And um, in the Philippines, there's just very few companies that can do cash dividends. So I'd say that CLI's dominant investing public is really the investors who are are the investors who are hungry for cash divs. Um, review Dito, it's extended, you're late, that's it. I mean, what else do you want me to tell you? Um, all right, guys, it's 20 minutes. Uh, time's up. Let's talk about U.S. markets. Uh, there's so much 10x opportunities worldwide. See you in the global market update. This is me signing out. Bye-bye, Philippines.